my name's John Lee Pettimore Same as my daddy and his daddy before You hardly ever saw granddaddy down here You'd only come to town about twice a year You'd buy a hundred pounds of yeast and a copper line Everybody knew that he made moonshine Now the revenue man wanted granddaddy bad Headed up the hollow with everything he had Before my time, but I've been told He'd never come back from Copperhead Road Hey, how you doing? Justin here. Today we are checking out Copperhead Road by Steve Earle. What a tune this one is. Really nice one for beginners. Can be very simple, but you can get into adding the little riff bit in there as well, which makes it a whole nother level of fun. So let's take it through nice and slowly, one step at a time, starting with a real basic version. The majority of the song is just a D chord. There's another section there where it goes G to D, G to D, and then it's back to staying on the D chord. The riff is all played over a D chord as well. So the first thing I should mention is the kind of the time, because it feels a little bit slow, but I feel the time being one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That's kind of how the, the time feels for me. Now, when you first start, if you're looking for like the most basic version, you want to be doing just one strum per bar. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And you could sing it. Well, my name's John Lee Pettimore. Same as my daddy and a daddy before. All of this is still D. You hardly ever saw granddaddy down here. One, two, three, four, two, two. He only comes to town about twice a year. Really good for beginners to play along with the original. You buy one of the seats and a copper line. We're still on D. And everybody knew that he made moonshine. Now we're changing to G for two bars. And now a new man wanted granddaddy bad He headed up to holler with everything he had G and there's a second bar of G And then it's down and back for Copperhead Road And then there's this like that little bit where it holds on the D So at that certain point you'd have to go through the lyrics And kind of make a little note for yourself when it's changing But you've got two bars of G, two bars of D, two bars of G And then a D chord where you just strum it once and let it ring out for two bars that's the only section. So on a most basic level, this is a really fun one for beginners to just play along with the original recording doing that kind of strumming. So one thing I'd like to mention here at this point is the type of G chord that you might choose. Some of you will know that the G chord can be played using fingers one, two, and three, two, three, and four, two, and three, three, and four, or one, two, three, and four. And it's this one which I think is the best one for this particular song because the third finger acts as an anchor when we're changing from our D chord to our G chord. So going from the D, lift first and second fingers up, Little fing third finger stays where it is in the third fret of the second string, little finger goes down underneath, third fret thinner string, first finger down on the second fret of the fifth string, and second finger goes down third fret of the thicker string. An option here if you find that a bit sticky is to leave off the first finger. So that'll mute the fifth string. So third fret, mute, open, open, third fret, third fret. That's also a very, very effective chord for this song. In fact, I think that would be my preference, would be regular D, and then this. Technically, it's called a G5 now when you lift off the first finger. This note. For me, it just gets a little bit muddy, you know, nearly all of the time. I tend to think the G chord's generally better off without that note, but that is the proper full, the proper version. But I'm not sure proper is the right one anymore. I'm having lots of internal debate about which is the best G for beginners to play. But right now, it's your choice. So the first step up the chain for the rhythm guitar part is going to be playing four strums to the bar. Now, in an ideal world, you want to be playing just the bass note on beat one, the full strum on beat two, just the bass note on beat three, and the full strum on beat four. But most beginners are gonna find that a little tricky. So a good kind of intermediate bridging kind of pattern for that is to do four down strums to the bar, but just a lighter one on beat one and three, 
Mm. And then a bigger one on two and four. So you end up with one, two, three, four, one. Now, when you're doing that, if you accidentally hit the A string, it doesn't matter. So you want to target with your pick the fourth string. But if you accidentally strum in that A string as well, it doesn't make a huge deal of difference. Much more important is staying in time and trying to accent that two and four. Because that's really, this song has got that sort of... Two and four is where the accent is, for sure. It's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That's really the, the kind of the underlying theme of the tune. My name's John Lee Pettimore. You can hear straight away, it's got much more vibe. Same as my daddy and my daddy before. Even if I'm... I only ever saw granddaddy round here. You only come to town about twice a year. So you can hear I deliberately kind of made fun of the alternating bass thing there, but it doesn't matter if you're accidentally accenting that fifth string instead of the fourth. You should aim for the fourth. It doesn't matter if you sometimes drift off a little bit. Much more important is the rhythm. Now, when you go to the G chord, if you're doing that pattern, that pattern, you, there, your bass note will now move to the thicker string. Bass chord, bass chord. Again, you can kind of strum a little bit. It doesn't have to be, it's not like so exact as that. Just bass strings, thin strings, bass strings, thin strings. That's a nicer way to think of that particular riff. More advanced guitar players can start targeting. So really trying to aim on the D string, and then the chord, and then the G. Okay, so it's something to aspire to, to be able to pick out the individual strings, but most beginner guitar players will find that pretty tricky to be that uh, accurate with the targeting of their pick in hand, unless, you know, you don't want to be staring at it either. You want to be able to kind of feel it. Um, and that's the kind of thing that mostly comes down with practice. A really nice thing to add into this tune is to play the riff. Now, it's a little bit more complicated. It's probably a bit above beginner level, but somebody who's really into the tune or happy to do a bit of extra practice will be able to get it, and it does sound great when you do. So the actual riff is this. requires a couple of things. One, the picking hand has to be pretty accurate and be able to play just the middle two strings with down strokes and up strokes. Okay, that's pretty important. Left hand has to be a little bit fast as well. Now, mostly you're going to have your first finger in the second fret of the third string. Third finger is going to go down in the fourth fret of the third string with an occasional slide up to the fifth fret, still on the third string. So you end up with this. One and two and a three E and Four and a one E and a two E and three and four. That's it just slowly. I'm going to take you through it in a little bit more detail. So one and two. Okay, so this is just both notes. This and here, that note often isn't played, but you'll find it a bit easier to add it in just softly. So one and two and up. So then first fingers off, and then the up stroke first finger will go down. One and two and a three E and four. Okay? Three E and down, up, down, down. So with the picking, down, 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 up, down, up, down, down. One and two and a three E and four and up. There's an and up, which is kind of pretty quiet on the original recording, so you could leave that out if you wanted to, but I think it does sound a little bit better with it in. One and two and a three E and four and up. One and two and a three E and four and up. Now, now it's the third finger go down in the fourth fret of the third string, sliding up. And then a down and up with it still on the on the the third finger on the fifth fret. Down, slide, down, up, down, up, down. 
then 4th fret, 2nd fret, open. 1 E and a 2 E and Down, slide, down, up, down, up, down Down, down, down Okay, lots of down picks there at the end. Down, up, down, 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 down Down, slide, down, up, down, up, down Down, down, down Okay, that whole riff together real nice and slow one and two and a three E and four and a one E and a two E and three and four. One and two and a three E and four and a one E and a two E and three and four. A little more like the real tempo. Three, four. Now, a couple of things that are going on here that you might not have noticed, but I feel like I should point out for some of you that have. First of all, my thumb is wrapped around the top of the, the fretboard here. Now, when I teach D chord to a beginner, I recommend that you get the thumb around the back. And the reason that I say that you should get the thumb around the back is that it'll really help build up this muscle here between the thumb and the first finger. And that's the muscle that you need for playing bar chords. Okay, so it's really, really important there uh, that you get that muscle strong. If that muscle is too weak, like when I'm playing D like this, I'm not using that muscle. It's pretty relaxed. And I think it's better for beginners to start by keeping that thumb around the back and developing the right strength that will help them play bar chords and power chords later than it is to wrap the thumb around. However, with songs like this, you really don't want that thicker string ringing out. If you hit the A string, it's not too bad, but you really don't want the thicker string ringing out. So sometimes having the thumb wrap around the top there and just touching the thicker string, sometimes I even have it wrapped far enough to be muting the thickest two strings, which particularly when I'm doing this kind of riff here, um, I want to make sure that those are muted. My pick hand might not be accurate enough to be able to get it right every time, especially if I'm on stage or you know moving around. So. Uh, that's something just to be aware of. If you're a real beginner, I wouldn't recommend doing that yet. I'd keep the thumb around the back and just focus on trying to keep your pick and accurate. Uh, but know that like longer term, thumb's probably going to wrap around and get involved with a bit of muting. Once you've got the riff down, if you listen to the original recording, you'll hear that it kind of pops up within the verse. So... Now, if I'm doing it that way, I'm holding the full D chord and I'm just using my little finger to go down on the 4th fret rather than the 3rd finger and that way I can get my whole chord ringing out at the same time. On the original recording, it's different instruments. There's a few different layers of acoustic guitar and mandolin and other stuff going on playing that riff. So, it feels a little bit harder doing it that way but you get the kind of the whole picture then. Um, if you're playing the whole riff, I'd be using my first and third finger. I think it's a bit stronger, you know, especially that I can't, yeah, I can't get my little finger to slide up from the fourth fret to the fifth fret while I hold a D chord. It's just not, yeah, no, it's not going to happen at all. So uh, if you're doing the whole riff, you're going to have to shift to using first and third fingers. But if you're just playing the verses, if you want to, you don't have to. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. practice just mixing it in. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and one. And remember, it's a little, there's lots of variations of that riff through the course of the tune. It's not exactly the same every time. In fact, the solo part is really nice and cool, deliberate variations of that main theme. So it's one of the things that you can definitely explore and try and muck around with a bit yourself and see if you can find your own variations when you're playing the tune. Don't feel that you have to stick with it being exactly the same all the time. It's kind of a, be a bit of a mission to be able to write down all of the variations and try and teach them to you because they are just kind of off-the-cuff things that you're probably better just having fun with them and figuring them out on your own. 
There's one other section that I need to mention, which is the bridge. Now, the bridge part is just a D chord, but with the rhythm one and two and three, four. So you want to do a deliberate mute there with the outside part of your hand. Okay, one and two and three, mute. Down, up, down, up, down, mute. I think one of the guitars, the, the dirty guitar, let's ring on the third time. So you get... get into that kind of uh, you know the flow of the tune and it, that's a, like a production technique but some of the instruments are stopping every time so that's kind of a choice as to whether you let them ring out on that third time or not. The form of the song is pretty straightforward if you have a listen to it basically there's eight bars of D times three for the verses then you've got the G G D D G G D hang uh, you have verse chorus then the little riff thing, like they're playing the melody like we have in the intro. Then another verse, chorus, then the bridge with the D chord, the da-da-da-da-da, stop, da-da-da-da-da, stop bit. Then it's another verse, another chorus, and another bridge. And then there's a lot of different riffs and variations there that take it out at the end. Do remember, if you're a beginner, the idea here is that you start simple and I'm giving you enough stuff to grow with the tune. So if you're literally new to D and G chord and basic strumming, just be happy to do This is playing on one and three or just My name's Charlie Panamo Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, same you know, take your time. Don't be in a hurry to try and do too advanced stuff. The really big deal with these kind of tunes is getting the rhythm solid. So play simple and make sure you get your rhythm in time. And if you want to, if you're particularly inspired by playing this tune, it's one that you'd really like to get on your song list, then sit down and spend a bit of time, work on the riff, take things slowly and get them right before you speed them up. Because practice makes permanent. Practice doesn't make perfect. So if you practice stuff wrong, you're going to master the wrong thing. And that ain't no good for anyone. Remember, over on the website, there are hundreds of songs for beginners, all nicely structured so you can find the right ones for your level. You can select by the chord or depending on where you are in the beginner's course. It's all free, so go and check it out. There'll be a link in the description. If you're over on YouTube, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate the support. And hit the bell if you want to catch me for some of my live feed lessons. I'll see you for plenty more very soon. You take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.